Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, we're here with two more games of the White Sox 2020 season. I believe we are still playing Detroit, which is good. Good for us. Um, let's look at the standings before we get into the game, though. Here are the standings right now as they stand. You can see Toronto somehow is leading the East. They're tied with New York, but they're they're up there. They're four and two, and Baltimore is two and two. And uh, yeah, so the whole East is like it's tighter than a tighter than a pair of leather shoes on a rainy day, as uh, Red Barber would say. <clears throat> So then you got uh, Minnesota and Kansas City and us leading, leading the uh, Central Division. <clears throat> Excuse me. At four and two, all at four and two. And then Cleveland at one and three and Detroit at one and five. And then Oakland on top in the uh, West at four and two with everybody else kind of struggling to keep up with that, including Houston. Uh, so we get on a little bit and whoa, look at Cincinnati, Cincinnati five and one there in the central and two games ahead of St. Louis and Milwaukee. And we play Milwaukee coming up, I think after the Detroit series. And then you got Arizona at three and one. So that kind of tied with San Diego, who's played more games. So that's pretty much where we are. Let's look at the um, some of the White Sox statistics. Just going to do this really quick. We got Mendick is having a hell of a season, hitting 462. Um, we got two home runs by Jimenez, but that's about it. That's our home run leader. And we're only hitting 237 as a team, so that needs to uh, that needs to get better. I mean, because we got a lot of guys that are really, really bad so far. Lewis Robert is bad. Moncada is bad. Now you know, over the course of the season, the law of averages um, probability says that they're going to get better. So we just got to wait for that to happen. And we have a team ERA of 4.33, which is also a touch high, I would say. Um, so, but that's mainly because of bad bullpen performances. And again, those are generally based on a uh, small sample size. So let's get into it. Uh, we are going to uh, play day. Let's see. Yeah, play day, and that'll leave us with our game. Manual, and we have Keuchel going up against Turnbull. And I don't think I'm going to mess with the lineup too much. I I think we kind of uh, think we can go with that. And I'll turn down the sound even more than it is. And so let's see, move my face up a little higher. And then here we go. We're pitching a shot to uh, Jacoby Jones, not Jacques Jones. He played a long time ago. Well, in the 90s, early 2000s. So there's a fly out to Mazzara. That brings up good room. And he's going to ground out up to Timmy Anderson. And that brings up Cabrera. And he is going to ground out to second base, hopefully. Yes, and he did. So Keiko gets out of the inning, and then we have Tim Anderson coming up against Turnbull. Kind of like those odds, but you don't because he grounded to scope. And he is out. Uh, one down, Lewis Roberts. And we're going to let Lewis Roberts swing away. Probably doesn't like that he's not leading off, and that's why he's hitting 056. I don't know. I mean, now you got Moncada, and he'll swing away. 
And again, I want to reiterate, <clears throat> and I think I've said this before because I'm using the same, um, I'm using the same season that I uh, used for the quick plays, and Crone is going to walk here. Um, I had the question of how I set this league up to be like a predicting 2020. And uh, I think I've gone over most of those, uh, most of the, uh... my God, he hit a double. He got the double. It was a double one to two and he hit it. So they may score here or maybe not. We'll see. No, they didn't. But Brandon Dixon's up with no outs. Um, what I did was, for the most part, players that um, are young, youngish, and um, don't have an injury history, um, but have been around a little while. I um, generally just left their cards the way they were. Um, So they scored a run there, it looks like, yeah. I left their cards pretty much the way they were with only mild exceptions. Like if they had last year done really way better than they had ever done in their career, or they or they had done way worse than they had ever done in their career, I would I tweak their cards a little bit. And a good example of that on the White Sox is Tim Anderson. He's been around a few years, but last year he really had a bust out season. Now we don't generally know if that was just a if that was just an outlier or whether um, he was really great and is going to be you know going forward. So what I did was I made his card just a little bit worse, not much. I did not make it a lot worse. I made it a little bit worse to account for the fact that that could have been. And there's an Abreu Jack fans, and so it's going to be a tie game here. I tried to uh, factor in that that may have been a career year for him. And then the same thing could be said for other players that were on the opposite end of the scale, that they had had a season or they'd had a career where they did, oh, and that's going to be Grand Dahl's going to follow it up with a back-to-back. -back. Um, where, you know, they were going along, they were good, they were good, they were good, pretty good, you know, decent. And then all of a sudden they just dropped off a cliff and they were terrible. And players like that, I may have made a little better. Generally, players that have been around, I um, I left them the way they were. Like, for instance, Grandall. Grandall's card, I basically left the way it was. Um... So now we've got two outs here, but we have a two to one lead now in the bottom of the second. But, and then and then there were players that were brand new, like Lewis Robert. And what I did with him in those cases was I would go back to a previous season that I had, and I would find somebody that fit the Lewis Robert profile. Um, and then I would just, um, import him to this league and then make him into Lewis Robert instead of whatever player he was. Um, and then in some cases, like a player like Mendick, I think was on the extra player card list. Oh, man. Okay, good. He didn't, jo Jacoby Jones got a home run right there, but he doesn't have um, home run power. So instead, it was a single. So for players like Mendick, maybe what I would have done is just grab his card from the um, extra player card um, list and put him on the White Sox, and then just increased his at bats and finagled his card a little bit, because usually those part-time players, those extra player cards, are skewed um, ridiculously, like. You know, it's all, they give up all, or they get all hits versus lefties, and they get nothing versus righties, you know, that type of thing. And the same thing for pitchers. They get torched versus um, one-handed pit uh, batter, but they get them out, you know. I mean, if you've seen the game, you know. And Mendick, Mendick is continuing his torrid hitting, but I'm going to say no.
we're not going to send him for the extra base at 55%. So Tim Anderson's up. I'm just going to let him hit. But you can see Tim Anderson. All right. Well, he just grounded out into a double play. But you can see his card is not too bad. So I didn't make it that much worse. I do allow for the fact that, yes, he could be have turned the corner and this is how he's going to be as a hitter from now on, but also kind of hedge the bets that he's not um, that good as he was last year. So that's a basic overview of how I did it. It did take quite a while to do it. And Moncott is up and he's singling double asterisks, I think. Yes. So we got runners at the corners, two outs, and then Canarsion. And he pops out. And then there was also some, you know, like if a player was old, an older guy that um, could be, you know, running down now. Um, I made him, I may have made him a little worse to account for age. So it looks like Crone's going to be on second, and he is. Scope strikes out. So, I, you know, just use your common sense um, for what your knowledge of the player is, what he did in the minors, if he was a brand new player like Lewis Robert was. Uh, Candelario is up here with uh, two outs. Oh, please make that play, Abreu. And no, he doesn't. So it's a tie game. Um, you know, and then account for age or account for the fact that somebody was a rookie and they were, you know, brand new and, um, and may do better or, or, you know, whatever than they did. So, I mean, that's, that's basically how I did it. All right. So we got a brave leading off in the bottom of the fourth here in a tie game at two. He'll swing away. And he's out. And then that brings up Grandall, and he'll swing away. And he singles. And he's already one for one with a tag, so. I'm going to pitch. I'm going to let Jimenez hit. And what happens there? Yeah, he goes to second, so Jimenez is still up. Come on. Let's do something, dude. Strikes out, though. Mazzara strikes out. This team is really not playing as well as I had expected that they would. Although, I mean, even though we're 4-2, and two, we're 4-2 and two because two of our games were won at, the, like, basically the last second against the Twins. And, um, and two of them were against the... <clears throat> Jacoby Jones is two for three. Two of them were against Detroit, so viewed in that light, we're not really doing that well. Now, that's going to be a single double asterisk with only one. Oh, oh, no, it's not. All right, cool. So only one out. Uh, still only one out. And that's going to be a fly ball B, so they're going to take the lead here. They're going to take the lead three to two. And uh, let's hope this isn't something, and it isn't. So, so they Detroit's got a three-two lead now. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Mendick up one for one, and our leading hitter, and he continues to be torrid. Not horrid, torrid, torrid pace. So anyway, strikeout by Tim Anderson, who is really underperforming. But you can see the card is good. I mean, I didn't make it bad. I did not make his card. Whoa, we got Lewis Robert going deep on a two-run homer to give us the lead. Yeah, that's right. Get upstairs, Aunt Minnie, and raise the window. So we got it. Now we take the lead back, and Moncada's up, and he's going to bring in El Quintera to pitch. I don't know. That was a close game. I don't know if you want to really take turn a lot of that, but, you know. All right. Swing away from Encarnacion, and he grounds out. So maybe we're waking up here. 
is, I mean, it's four to three. If we score a couple more runs, that'll probably be the most we've scored all year. Fly ball to Mazar is probably going to be a double. Yeah. And then uh, Dixon's up with a man at second, but he strikes out. And Candelario, ground ball, shortstop, Bay. And that brings up Romine. And he hits a second base X. Hopefully Mendick makes the play. And he does. So we still got the four to three lead. Abreu up, swimming away with him. And he hits a home run, his second one of the game. So now I think, yeah, we're waking up. I think the lineup is saying enough of this. Enough of this crap. We're better than this. So, all right. So now we've got Grandall up and Grandall is flying out. As soon as the ball comes back from being foul. I forgot to take it off the, uh, you know, watching the scores go by. Did want to take that off, but we will look into doing that maybe between games. And Jimenez with one out, and he's going to not hit a home run. He's going to hit a fly ball, a deep fly ball but a fly ball nonetheless. But it is five to three, so I'll take it. Mazzara up and Mazzara out. Over and out. Yeah. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. My wife wanted me to help her with some, a couple things, so. So we have a ground ball by Maven, leading off the seventh here for Detroit, and then Jones. And that's going to be a strikeout plus injury to Jones, and he's been on fire in our face, so he'll have to sit out the rest of the game. And Goodrum is up, and that's going to be a single. So we're going to. I'm going to see if we can get Keuchel through this because he's been pitching pretty well. I mean, he's given him three runs, but he still generally has been pitching pretty well. But we'll see. Bottom of the seventh now. We're still ahead. Five to three. And Mendick up. And Mendick is three for three. The man cannot be stopped. Uh, that brings up Tim Anderson, who really should be pitching, hitting a lot better than he has. He's 0 for 4 on the game. And that brings up Lewis Robert, and he strikes out. So there's two down with Mendick at first. In the seventh, Moncada up, and he singles. So we keep the inning going, and I'm just going to hold. And that brings up Ben Canarcion, and you expect better from him. He's also 0 for 4, just like Tim Anderson. So that's where we are. Um, I am at least going to go to the defensive replacement um, area. We've got an area like that. And Angle is going to go in for Jimenez. Um, so do I stick with Keiko? That's the question. And the answer is yes. We got a two-run lead, so unless he gets into trouble, I don't see. And my phone is exploding now. I really don't need that. So let's turn down the volume. I thought I turned down the volume. All right. 
opens up, and he's striking out. So there's there is one out with a man at first. And the scores are rolling in. Of course, we, you know, pretty much we saw the standings. Brandon Dixon is up, and he's going to fly out to center. And we may just be able to get Keuchel through this game. And then that brings up Candelario. And no, he's going to pitch hit Ronnie Rodriguez, and he gets a single. And Romine is up and going to be out to second base. So we're getting the good rolls. And I am going to try to keep Keiko. Ah, he's tired. But you know what? I may even still send him out there. So we got Bray up, especially if we get some more runs here. Grandall swing away. And he is out. And that brings up Angle. And he's going to get a double one to nine, but no, he's going to fly out instead. But you know what? I am going to do that. I'm going to keep Keiko out there for right now. He walks Maben. That brings up Castro, and that, he's going to pinch hit Hicks. And that's going to be a ground ball shortstop, a pitcher's best friend, and really my best friend at the moment. So, yeah, we might get him through this game. Although, good, good is going to keep it going. They're going to keep him hanging on with a single. All right, obviously, turning the sound down on my phone didn't really work. There's going to be a walk. All right, come on, Keiko. And he does. He gets out of it, fly ball to center field. I like to live by the seat of my pants, and it worked there. So get the box score. Now we have a totally well-rested bullpen. Keiko went the distance, gave up only two earned runs, three runs total, but two earned and struck out nine in nine innings. And that brings us to five and two on the season. So we'll get out of that. Um, we'll go to uh, game preferences. Uh, let's see. It's not play by play, or is that? <sighs> um, I'll I'll just go to minimal play by play and see how that changes it. So we've got uh, the next day play day. And there you go, Detroit to Chicago. Like I said, I think our next game is Milwaukee. Uh, but we got Geo going up in this game against Daniel Norris. Uh, let me see if I want to edit the lineups at all. Um, it's tough. Um, you know what? I'm going to put Engel in for Mazzara. And he's going to bat right there. And we're going to go play ball. So, Jacoby Jones, who was temporarily injured in the last game, and I wish it had been for a little longer because he leads off with a home run off Geo. Now, we have a totally rested bullpen in this game because I was able to coerce Keuchel through the through last game as a complete game start for him. So we have pretty much every pitcher at our disposal in this game, should Geo really start to get bad. And that brings up Crone, and he's going to ground ball out.
Tim Anderson. That always rolls in the two column. All right, Lewis Robert. I'm going to let him swing away. Maybe I do need to switch them in the lineup. Maybe that would be good for both. Moncada up, swing, swinging away. And he strikes out. And that brings up Scope in the second, leading off the second, and he gets hit by pitch by Gonzalez, and that brings up Brandon Dixon, but he'll fly out. I mean, the really good thing about this Detroit lineup is everybody is so bad that there's no way they're going to string hits to get hits and walks. They're not going to string a rally together. They're just not going to do that. They might get lucky and, you know, hit a two-run home run with a guy on, but they're not going to, like, just hit, 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 walk. That's not going to happen with this team because it's impossible. All right, they got runners on the corners, but there's two outs in Ronnie Rodriguez, who is a very good flies out. But they still have a one nothing lead. Encarnacion has not really done much this year for us, but there he does. I was looking right at that home run, too. I was like, please land on that home run. And it did. So Encarnacion ties the game. And that brings up Abreu, who's going to swing away. And he walks. And that brings up Grandal. Grandall's going to hit a single one to six, and he does get it. Nice. See, we... Oh, no, I'm going to hold the runner. We can string hits together. It's possible. Jimenez is up, and he's going to ground into a no. Thank you, Jimenez. So, runner at third, Engel up, and Engel singles him in. Nice. So, now we got the lead. We got the good 2-1 lead. And Garcia, Lori Garcia, up. and he's going to single, single one of 13, and he gets it. And that brings up Tim Anderson, who should get a hit. Now they're taking Norris out already. And that might be a wild pitch that scores a run, and does. And Anderson's still up now, and he's striking out. Anderson, come on, man. Pick yourself up. All right, so... We do have a 3-1 lead, though, with Jacoby Jones up and striking out. So that gives Gio a little bit more rope. Double one to nine, single. Although with a fresh bullpen, I can't afford to go to it quicker. And double one to 17, not good. Cabrera, doubling in the gap, shopping at the gap. So they have a, they're down by 3-2 now, and then they get a line out. Now there's two outs with Cabrera at second and Scope up, and he's going to fly out to right. But thankfully, I put Angle out there this game, so that should be an out. So we're coming back. We're now up 3-2. to two. Got a one-run lead now. I mean, if this offense could play like it does, these pitchers wouldn't have to worry about getting pulled because we would be just scoring runs left and right. Single from Moncada. We got two on with no outs. And I am going to send that guy to the base. And he does make it. And so Encarnacion is up, and he strikes out. Abreu is up, and he grounds out to the ground ball to the pitcher. I'm going to try to advance, and uh, pitcher is injured on the play, but can remain in the game, I guess. So we scored another run, so now we have a 4-2 lead. Grandall up with two out. Nice hit would be great. Hits it to Ronnie Rodriguez at short, who isn't very good, and he does make an error, so that's nice. So now it's 5-2. <laughs> And uh, and there's a home run by Jimenez, who I believe continues to lead our team in home runs now, or at least tied for it. And you can kiss that ball goodbye because it's gone. And now we've got a huge lead, and 
a lot of rope for my man Gio Gonzalez. And Garcia up, ground ball second base. And that is going to end the inning. But we have a 7-2 to lead going to the top of the fourth. And that's going to be a strikeout. All right, let me see here. Maybe I have to, uh, yeah, that's what happened. I didn't put it in silent mode. Candelario up, and that's going to be an out. And Romine is up, and he's going to be out plus injury, and let's see if that's... But he shakes it off and can continue in the game, so... So, Tim Anderson, now, now it doesn't really matter. I don't think that he's getting out all the time. It's not great, but, you know. Robert strikes out. I think a lot of our averages have gone up during this, this series. And certainly these two games. So, uh, Ryan Rodriguez facing Gio in the fifth. And he strikes him out. Jacoby Jones strikes out. And Nico Goodrum, triple one or a single. So he gets a hit. But again, this team with two outs, they're not going to put a rally together. And that's a strikeout. So Gonzalez gives me five. I'm going to try to get at least six out of him. I always like to. Oh, here we go. And Canarcion hitting another home run. Second of the game. I always like to try to get as much out of my starters as I can. I'm like a 70s guy, you know, as far as managing goes. I like my starters to go the distance or go, you know, seven or eight. I'm not like the modern day manager that. Um, you know, takes their starters out after they've been three times through the lineup or the fifth inning or whatever. That the yeah, stupid Craig Council stuff. I don't do that. That's a fly ball, and it's going to be an out for the second out of the inning here in the sixth or in the fifth, bottom of the fifth. And Jimenez up. Let's see if he can hit his second home run of the game. He can. I mean, I was just asking, you know. So, Crone is up. We got Gonzalez out there. I mean, not only is he cruising, but on top of that, we've got just a huge lead. And scope up with one out in the top of the sixth. That's an out. And then Brandon Dixon up, and that's going to be an out to third base. And he's not tired yet, so he will definitely go out there for the seventh. And Engel is getting his second hit of the game. He's two for two. Uh, yeah, Garcia, I'll let him hit. Ground ball to the first baseman. That's Chrome, who is pretty good at first base. So. Yeah, that's double play. And then Tim Anderson, who hasn't done anything in a while, gets a single. So that's his first hit of this um <clears throat> tail end two game tail, tail end two games of the season or of the of the series against Detroit. And Robert is injured on the play and he's out fifteen days. Wow. Well that's gonna sting. It's gonna sting a little. Uh who are we gonna bring in? Um I'm gonna bring in Tilson for right now. Um And then um, Moncada's up. And that's going to be second base. That'll be an out. So it, that's not going to affect us this game. But going forward for the next few games, it might be. Oh, what? Wait a minute. How was he? Oh, I guess there was an error. Uh, so two outs, bases loaded, and Canarcion up. And we are winning 8-2. to two. And I guess he brought in a relief pitcher. 
and that's going to be a fly ball to left field X, and that's Dixon, so he could drop that or not get to it easily, and he doesn't get to it, so... So, yeah, I think it's safe to say that the injury to um, Lewis Robert is not going to affect us this game at all. In fact, I'll even keep him in the center. Even though it would generally be smarter to move him to right and then move Angle to center. But I'm just going to keep it this way because I don't think it matters. Candelario walks to lead off the top of the seventh. And then Romine comes up. And he's going to home run one to six double. I may still see if I can get him through this inning, though, because we have such a huge lead. Ground ball shortstop A. That's going to score a run. Uh, Jacoby Jones strikes out. And Nico Goodrum. Ground ball second base. He's four. And uh, Gonzalez, I guess he made an error. Gore couldn't get to it, whatever. So Gonzalez is tired. And that's ground ball third base X to Moncada. And he got him. So that's not too bad. I mean, he gave up two runs there. So it's seven, eight, ten to... Uh, 10 to 4. Grandall up. He'll swing away. And he walks. Jimenez is up. And he's going to single 1 to 5 and line 4 line out. And he's going to line out to Dixon. That brings up Engel, who has been red hot. And he is out. He lines out as well. And now Lurie Garcia, and he's grounding out. So we're going to take uh, Gonzalez out um, home. Let's see, home. We'll put in Ruiz again. Ruiz is our uh, junk pitcher, our guy that comes in when uh, we're either blowing somebody out or we're getting blown out. He doesn't really have that great of a card. As you can see. Scope is up, and he walks. Dixon's up. up. And Dixon is out, lining out. And that brings up Candelario. And he's hit by pitch. So the Tigers have two on with two down, and then they hit into a double play. Boy, not really a double play. It's one out because there was already two. So we got Anderson up. Anderson hits a fly ball. Tilson up, and he strikes out. And uh, Moncada is going to swing away. And that's going to be a strikeout. Ryan Rodriguez against Ruiz to lead off the ninth inning. And he doubles. Greets him with a double. Jacoby Jones is up. And he's going to ground out. Brings up Goodrum. Who walks. So the Tigers have two on with one out and Cabrera up and he singles. Ruiz is tired, but we'll leave him out there. And that's a walk and that scores a run. One out, hoping for the double play, but no, we don't get it. And I think I'm going to take this out. I'm going to throw for the lead runner. And he is out. Good. So it is three, five, seven. It's 10 to. 
Yeah, it's 10 to 7. I'm going to take Ruiz out of the game. We're going to bring in Jace Fry. And he'll pitch to Dixon, and that's a single. <clears throat> Runners at the corners, but there is two out. So, and that's a strikeout. So, Fry shuts it down. And we'll get the box score. We win again. Detroit goes to one and seven. We go to six and two on the year. Gonzalez pitched okay. I mean, you know, he had a lot of rope because of the runs we scored. Ruiz did not pitch okay. And then Fry came in and got the save. So that's where we are. Six and two on the year after eight games, and I think playing Milwaukee next. <clears throat> but that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.